guys, I'm the Sky Spire, and welcome to a video about Xenoblade Chronicles 2, yet another one, of course, because, as you guys know, in less than two months, yes, we are that close to the release, in less than two months, this game, the sequel to a legendary, legendary game, is going to get released. So, Xenoblade Chronicles 2 focuses a lot on the bond between drivers and blades, blades being these sort of beings that can sort of create a weapon for a driver to use. So drivers and blades have a very big, um, they have nice synergy, and that's that uh, seems to be a huge factor in the imagery of Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Uh, you can create your own blades, and some of them seem to be pretty generic, like this one, and this one, and this one, but as the, uh, as a fairly recent direct one said, you can sometimes hit the jackpot and get a very special one. So there are actually quite a few rare blades that we have been shown, and they were revealed in Japanese circles, so not here, but uh, either way, uh, stick around for this video and I'll talk about the different rare blades that we now know of, just getting more hype for Xenoblade Chronicles 2, because that's my job to spread hype. And um, just talk about the blades, what they do, and uh, I actually do want to talk about their character designers as well, because that is actually... Ever since Xenoblade Chronicles 2 is released, I've actually been paying a lot more attention to character design than I have been before. Uh, that's really, that's the magic about RPGs. Anyway, so let's get right into this. First off, of course, we'll start off with the blades that we've seen under Rex's charge. So, of course, Pyra. Everyone knows about her. So, there are three types of blades. Offensive, defensive, and healer. Um, I assume that this will not only be reflected in their stats, but the arts that they give to, uh, the driver. So, Pyra is an offensive type, and she is a fire type blade. Oh boy, Pokemon time. Um, of course, she is the most plot-relevant blade, seeming to be the secondary character, uh, the secondary main character. Um, and her character designer, of course, I've heard this name countless times, Masatsugu Saito, who, I don't know why they chose a hentai dojin artist for this game, but <laughs> it's painful. God, anyways, okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But, uh, yes, this is Pyra. Um, now, quickly about Pyra. We didn't know this before, but whenever people in the um, in the trailers are saying that they want the Aegis, the Aegis is actually Pyra, that blade. Um, she, Pyra has this emerald core crystal, the blades are created from core crystals, which I believe the Indolan Praetorium uh, handles them, uh, the distribution of them. Pyra has an emerald core crystal, making her extremely, um, extremely important, and the fight for the Aegis will throw the world into chaos, that's what's said. So Pyra is very story-centric. Um, except she willingly gets into fights. Also, apparently she's 13 year old, years old, that's just a flat out lie. Anyways, <laughs> um, so next up, uh, we'll go through, we'll just go through the blades that we've seen under Rex's control. So next up, we have Finch, this adorable little, actually, girl. Um, so this girl, freaking adorable, we've never seen anything quite like Finch in Xenoblade. She has the power to take aggro, so she is, uh, very tank-like, I assume, which you can also see reflected in that hammer of hers. Um, just by colors, you can probably guess that she uses the power of wind, which is correct, so those green arts, I believe it was Kisaragi, which also used wind, I think, that was a common blade, I'm not sure. But she's defensive type, so we can see that reflected, more tank-based. Um, I would assume that this would work better with Tora, but who knows, I, I guess if you want to distrib distribute this evenly. Finch was designed by Kunihiko Tanaka, and this is actually pretty remarkable. Kuniko Tanaka was the character designer for the Xeno Saga games. Look up, um, like, Cosmos or... Cosmos and Momo. Look up those two characters from Xeno Saga. You may like the designs. Um, a lot of, a lot of people like Tanaka's designs, so... Finch, awesome. Next up, Vasara. Look at this guy. I want to point out Vasara is not just a random name that they came up with for this guy. No, uh, Vasara was actually the name of a boss, the Chapter 10 boss in Xenoblade Chronicles X. So, and that was also like one of the coolest bosses in the game. So Vasara, oh man, he's cool. He uses the power of Shadow. He has this sort of like container that he's wielding in his other hand. Not sure what the deal with that is, but very cool design. You can see, um. I would assume at first that he wields the power of fire just from like the hair and stuff, but no, he's very cool. He, very unique pose. That the way that he's posed with his like leg on the top of that cliff, like very dominating, you know. Uh, and I imagine like uh, most of the blades uh, are like you know servants to their drivers. It's kind of like the relationship between a Pokemon and a trainer, as far as I see it. They have their own free will, but trust in the uh, in the um, 
in the orders of their drivers. So it's interesting seeing this guy uh, who's towering over Rex, just, I assume he towers over Rex, just like beating everyone down. It's awesome. This guy's character designer was Yasushi Suzuki, who was the character designer for uh, Ikaruga and the Sin and Punishment games. Apparently, she also worked on the in-between animation on Evangelion? Wow, that, that's that's pretty amazing considering Evangelion was the first anime I ever watched. I, I should rewatch it, but yeah. Azami. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Azami, it doesn't take a lot to know. She wields the power of Shadow. What is interesting about Azami is that she's almost cybernetic and robotic, but she isn't, like, artificial. She is a organic blade that comes from a core crystal like all the others, so maybe ghastly is a better term to describe Azami. Very cool, wielding the power of Shadow. Reminds me of a Tails character. Or, yeah. Um, very interesting. A zombie was designed by Hakus, which, it, when you have a name like Hakus, like, it's not very unique, I guess, like, that username. So I can't figure out what Hakus worked on in the past, but Azami! <laughs> very cool. I really like Azami. And, like, the, the, that hand wielding the weapon, very strong, you know? It feels like um, they're not completely going for that sort of cartoonish, happy look with all of the characters in this game. We've seen some badass, some Vasara, and some downright creepy with Azami. So, it's nice to see that whenever you get a rare blade, it's not like all the common blades are all the same, and then all the rare blades are all the same. Azami and, like, Finch, like, they're completely different, so it's nice to see that. Anyways, under Nia, of course, we have her signature blade, which we've seen since the start. Dromar- uh, I don't know if it's Dromarch or Dromark, but- uh, which one? Now I'm saying it on camera for the first time. Dromarch. Dromark. I don't know! Dromarch. Dromarch. So he uses the power of water. For some reason, online calls it aqua. Um, so he looks like this sort of tiger being. And the cool thing is, he apparently speaks like a butler. Like, like he calls Nia my lady. Like, oh my gosh. He has a sort of deep voice and calls Nia my lady. Like, oh yes. Oh yes. <laughs> It's so lovely. So yeah, um, Dromark is going to- Did I just switch? I'm calling him Dromark. Um, tell me, what do you guys call Dromark? Um, so, interesting thing, this guy actually does bring something different to Xenoblade, not only, uh, in battle, but also in the, uh, overworld. When you are playing as Nia, you have the ability to ride on Dromark, and you actually do move faster on the overworld, so, the thing is, this is different. You're seeing a nice, definitive reason to use different characters on the overworld, because the other two games, Xenoblade and Xenoblade Chronicles X, like, there wasn't really any real reason to use anyone, like, in specific when you're just wandering around, but if Dromark lets you move faster, that is awesome. And I think Xenoblade Chronicles actually did have some skills where, like, at nighttime you can move faster if you have the skill, but, you know. Either way, you can see Dromark's weapons on his sides, those two blue rings, you can see Nia wielding them in almost all of the battles that you see Nia take part in, in the directs and stuff. Uh, but he's very cool. We haven't seen people play as Dromark a lot, but we know that they can ride around together. And that's adorable, Nia being like this super cute cat girl, and then Dromark being this, like, sort of butler servant. Like, oh god, that's so cool. Like, it's very hard not to like Dromark. <laughs> Next up is Hotaru. Hotaru is... Okay, she's adorable. Or, or is it... Actually, is it a he? I'll get, to, I'll get down to that in a second. Of course, when you look at the video, you'd immediately assume it's a she, but hold on. So first off, um, they use the power of stone, and you can see that they have... Like, you know, that sort of orb that, um, they are wielding. Uh, it's interesting, considering, like, the petals and everything, you'd assume it's a guy, but no, they use the power of stone. Um, now here's the thing, in the video that you just saw, they refer to, f first off, when they're looking away from you, they say something along the lines of, oh, good thing that this driver looks easy to string along, or something. And then, they turn around, and, oh, oh, it's nothing, I'll be lending you my healing powers, so we can assume that Hotaru is a healing-based stone blade. However, they say I, Boku, and Boku 
it could still be a girl who, like, talks like a guy, which would, like, you know, a sort of less feminine girl. But Hotaru doesn't seem to sound like very a fem very feminine name, and the design doesn't have any feminine features aside from their face, like if you look at the hips and the chest. So it's likely that it's a guy, as far as what other people believe. I'm actually this this is actually me just like reading off of what comments believe, but um, I, I didn't come up with that. I yeah. I, di I didn't catch that when I saw the video. So it's interesting. Is this a trap? That'd be hilarious if it's a trap. The character designer is Taiki, who I... I think Taiki worked on Digimon? Or maybe just Digimon World Next Order? I'm not sure. But Taiki, yeah. I think Hataru's design is actually pretty cool. Um, I don't want to say he or she because I have no idea. But, um... So if it's a trap, that'd be pretty funny, because, like, the blades don't- Because, like, these rare blades don't seem to have their own, like, unique interactions, so... Seeing a character would seem so interesting, like, them being a trap character, but you don't actually get to, like, see, like, in depth what this is like. That That's kind of funny. Uh, it makes Hotaru that much more unique, combined with this being a stone- a stone blade, like, what? <laughs> Anyways, next up, we're going to go to Torres Blade, starting with Popey. Now, if you have seen my Xenoblade Chronicles 2 analysis a few months ago, you would note, uh, I, I pointed out the fact that on the Blade selection screen, only Rex and Nia appear. Even though Tora is a playable character, for some reason he is not able to create his own blades. Not to mention, in the wallpaper for the game, it's Rex and his blade, Nia and his blade, and then the eye patch guy in what looks like his blade. So why is Tora left out of all of this, even though in all the gameplay we've seen Tora being part of the party? It's we're, it's pretty much 90% confirmed now that Tora cannot create his own blades. He's not necessarily a driver. And now let's talk about what his signature blade is. Popey, or Popey Alpha? It seems that's the name of her. Popey A, Popey Alpha. I'm just going to be calling her Popey. Popey is an artificial blade built by Tora. So yeah, it, you would never guess this, like just from looking at pictures of Popey, but she is created by Tora. And she's pra been practicing the no pun language. She uses the power of stone and um, Popey and Tora do sort of have a blade driver relationship. They battle together and to the point where we haven't been able to figure out if they're like a real driver and blade until now. But, um, uh, Tora can use this ability called the Popey Alpha Shield, so that's interesting. Um, really, really making it seem like Tora is just spending his time with, uh, in the, in the scrap heap creating stuff, and then he just wanted to be one of these guys, so he created his own artificial blade. Making Popey very unique! I don't want that sad robot death, that'd be terrible, that'd be very, very sad. Anyways, um, apparently... Yeah, this does extend to Tora. He's not a blade, but he can- er, sorry, he's not a driver. But yet, there are yet so many other, um, blades that are, have yet- that have yet to go through, and apparently Tora can use all of them? Not just Popey? So, who knows exactly what Tora's deal is? Is he a driver? Is he not? Either way, next up, Rock. Nothing much to say about Rock. There's nothing much we know about him. We just saw- rock in like one character in, in like one piece of gameplay footage but it's interesting you'd expect a bird right except it's like a bird like with a beak but then you have like a waluigi mustache coming off of it that's like green and then like a whole head of hair but like it, it wow like big chubby bird let's go you know the Donkey Kong country tropical freeze world 2 boss that's what rock is oh my god <laughs> it's awesome I, I like it anyways um okay next up Kubira. Kubira seems to be this very high and mighty royalty blade. Um, it's interesting because, you know, blades are not above drivers as far as we're aware. So, yeah, seeing Kubira, it's interesting, even from his design. Like, it looks like he comes out of, like, Persona or something. I don't know. Like, look at this guy. The colors, the reds. The, the red smoke, the red and black, like, I imagine Persona when I look at this guy. Anyways, so he also wields the power of Shadow, and he was also designed by Hakus, the same character designer that designed, uh, I believe it was, um, Azami? Yeah, yeah, it was Azami. Seeing a blade act all high and mighty like this, acting like 
it's higher than us. It's interesting. He has his own throne and everything. So this blade, Kubira, can't possibly be like actually higher ranked than the others, right? He uh, can't possibly be higher than drivers, right? So again, just like um, Hotaru, it's really interesting seeing like a blade which could be a character in and of itself with its own interactions but just because you know they're a driver they're a, a weapon it doesn't seem like that'll be the case but hey who knows either way next up is uka <laughs> uka is a sort of fox lady uh she's interesting it's a fox lady but there's like a dragon on her back, but it has like two heads on it, and then like one of them is red and one of them is blue. Like it's just like such a weird design. Like Kubiro is pretty straightforward. It's like a, it's like a edgy prince with an axe, and then you have this. Like the huh? Like the, really? It's like there's this complete crazy mis um, mishmash of everything. It's kind of funny. Um, so the character designer for this was Nakaba Higurashi, who was the main character designer for the Baton Kaitos series. And if you look up Baton Kaitos, um, character designs, it's not that surprising. It seems like all of the characters from Baton Kaitos are, like, humans, but they also have, like, a bunch of extra additions that, like, they don't need. Like, just random jewelry and random, like, like caps and like you know a bunch of weird accessories that like they don't need that seems to be the general thing for the Britain Kaito's characters so yeah I'm not opposed to getting into the series I listen to the music it's great <laughs> Uka is interesting we don't know her um her ability you look at her head and you go like is it fire is it ice and then you look at her like the fists and it's like technology based so it's very confusing but yeah so that's that's her also the, see i'm guessing like she's the sort of muscular athletic fox lady like just from her design but yeah Raiko. Raiko might be my favorite uh, unique blade just from design alone. I think this is a really cool character. So she's goofy and lightheaded. Uh, obviously she wields the power of thunder if you couldn't figure that out. But what I think is cool about Raiko is that in that, um, in that little video, you see like how she gets struck by lightning and then, you know, it doesn't seem to affect her. It seems to like, you know, heal her, if anything, or like, you know, amplify her powers. And she doesn't seem, like, completely right in the head. Like, her hair is all fuzzy, and then, like, the way that she smiles is still kind of like... <laughs> like, she's she's very, like, goofy. And I like that. It's like it's like constant static all around her, and, like, on her face, it's all staticky. Like, she's not always, like, properly focused. I like that. Her facial expression in that video is just awesome. Raiko wields this huge, gigantic hammer, so we're just going to assume that Raiko is an offensive, uh, uh, electric-based blade. And I don't know if we've ever seen an electric-based blade until Raiko, so I don't remember seeing one, so that's interesting. Um, the power of thunder that she wields and that huge hammer reminds me of Okami, which is always a good thing, but yeah. The character designer was Asato Mizu, who did a bunch of anime that I've never heard of? Denki Guy. That is like the one. Denki Guy is the one show that I've like maybe heard the name. Like, I haven't heard of it. It's like a bunch of anime I've never heard of. But either way, Raiko. It must be pretty good then, because Raiko's character design. Absolutely awesome. I think her character design is so cool. It's not like, uh, you know, super, you know, fan service y. Unlike. Okay, so, so, so can we like go back for a sec? Cause I gotta take a double take. Okay. <laughs> Seriously. First off, in that in that one Xenoblade uh, two trailer, you just have Pyra with like the insane jiggle physics, and then uh, you have Tokiha over here, and Tokiha just boom. Like okay, like Zero Suit Samus and Smash. They would obviously be going all over the place, but. The Freaking, the developers didn't go out of their way to program Jiggle Physics in. And then you have Pyra and Tokiha, and oh my god, like, 
unreal. That's what I'm saying. It's completely unreal. Anyways, Tokiha wields the power of ice, and she actually looks really cool. Like, it's like this sort of jungle aesthetic with her. It's weird, because, like, she's all dressed in, like, white, and it's not like, you know, it's not like the fox girl, but just from the, you know, the the style of clothes combined with the spear, I get the sort of jungle vibe from her. The tan skin, you know? It's very cool. Um, also, there's not a lot of support. Anyways, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, just judging by the color, we're just gonna guess she wields ice. Not been confirmed. Um, the character designer is Takahiro Kimura. Credited in a lot of anime. Uh, Mobile Suit Gundam and Code Geass. I, I still don't know how to pronounce that. Code Geass. I, I want to watch it just because it looks really cool. But yeah, Mobile Suit Gundam and Code, Ge uh, Code Geass. Those were the two that I um, recognized. So yeah, very interesting, very interesting. Also, why'd you program that? Anyways, um, one last thing that I'd like to point out, because that is all the major blades that we have been um, introduced to, is Tetsuya Nomura. Tetsuya Nomura, the legendary man himself. Tetsuya Nomura had a hand in the character designs of this game, and that is amazing. Originally, he was just credited under the name Torna. But now we know what Torna means. Torna is that mysterious organization that work under the clouds to fulfill their secret goals. And the two members of Torna that we know right now are the white, uh, that sort of, um, the white clad one with the mask, like almost like a wolf, as we've been describing him, and the black haired soldier guy with the really cool sword. So, yeah, Tetsuya Nomura is the character designer for both of these guys. That is actually really awesome because a lot of people consider this guy legendary when it comes to his designs, which is awesome. He's not a hentai doujin artist, so that means a lot. No, I'm sorry. I, I have a huge grudge against Pyro. <laughs> oh my god. Anyways, so that is that. I think the blades in this game are really cool because... The thing is, some people are, like, uh, choosing to hate on, like, Rex's, like, voice actor or Pyra's character design. And you know what? I will, like, pretty much agree with that. I'll agree with all that. However, it's lovely to see the amount of color in this game. And the thing is, the creator, um, Mr. Takahashi said that he wanted... He was a little tired of the stories that start with your hometown being destroyed or planet Earth being destroyed. And he just wanted a nice little quaint story, which was, um... Uh, it was more just a story that someone could look back on fondly one day as something that really shaped their lives. Something that feels like a young adult story with a taste of boy meets girl. So it's it's nice seeing a more touching story and it's not like this is new. It's not like this is new to Xenoblade because Xenoblade Chronicles 1 masterfully created these seven characters and really um, tied them together in their own diverse ways into the plot. Really making their interactions what made Xenoblade what it is. Um, so it's not like this is new, but just the idea of creating a story that's based on that, a story that's not focused all on, uh, adventure or all on story, there's something both, for both sides in Xenoblade Chronicles 2, as Takahashi said, it's lovely seeing that. Um, so there is definitely a lot of color in this game, unlike Xenoblade Chronicles X, where it was like all numbers and letters on screen and it was hard to see what was actually happening in battle, this game is a lot more visually appealing, if you can like see everything visually, not always having to look through the art palette. So you know, this game has a bigger focus on the visuals already. Now when you take all of these character designers from so many different anime all together to create this completely diverse cast of blades from Finch, this sort of cute bird-like one, to Azami, this shadow-like creepy mannequin girl, like it's really cool and really good and Honestly, I'm just looking forward to being able to spend hundreds and hundreds of hours in this game. It comes out in uh, less than two months on December uh, December 1st. I was hoping it would be 4th. December 1st. And oh dear lord, that is going to be a beautiful day. So everyone, hope you guys are excited as I am. Hope you guys have let the hype spread to your minds. Spread it to everyone, spread it to everyone else. I will see you guys later.